Hello, I'm Hilary, Pastor Derek's wife. I want to speak to you about the Holy Spirit and his gifts. But first of all, we need to remind ourselves of what the Bible is. It's a supernatural book. It's filled with signs and wonders marking divine interventions. Moreover, God still wants to move supernaturally in and through the church, which is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not a, a, something that was uh, in the early church and has now stopped. It is for the whole of the church age until Jesus comes again. And God wants to use us all in supernatural ways. I don't mean spooky supernatural. When it's genuinely supernatural, it's, it's just as the Holy Spirit leads us. And it's so easy and, and, and flows. And so um, we're going to have a look through the Bible to see what are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You see, there are nine gifts um, of manifestations of the Spirit. And it's given in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, which cover all the different gifts that God may move through us. Uh, we've got three revelation gifts, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge and discerning of spirits. And that's in the spirit, knowing um, things that we could not possibly know of our own um, ability. And there are three power gifts, the gift of faith, the gift of working miracles and the gift of healings. That's the spirit of doing. And then there are three inspirational gifts or utterance gifts, speaking, um, which is speaking in tongues, the interpretation of tongues and prophecy, um, the Holy Spirit speaking through someone, um, speaking as from God, a message from God. And so in order for God to, uh, to work through us, it requires our intelligence cooperation. Uh, so our ignorance in this is it's a blockage to God and he can't use us as much as he would like to. And so when we understand how these gifts work, we will be better able to receive them, to yield to the Holy Spirit, to operate in them easily and to minister to others. Because you can have a word of wisdom for somebody and it can change their life. Uh, and, and a word of knowledge where someone is really struggling and you would just have a word from God saying, the Lord has said this and it just opens their heart and their eyes and it makes them realize that God loves them intimately and knows their tiny, tiny details. God loves us, all of us, but he loves us individually just as though we were his only child. And I think that's absolutely amazing. Only God can be like that. So we need to know what God's word is about these gifts um, and that will cause us, it will stir up in us a desire for these gifts to work in our lives um, and it's make ourselves available for, us, for the Holy Spirit to work through. Now when I say desire, it's not like um, I have decided I want the gift of miracles, God give it to me. No way, it's as the Holy Spirit desires when he desires, how he desires. And um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 uh, commences, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, it's, isn't it wonderful? It is as though Paul is speaking to us down through nearly 2,000 years. And he's saying to us, to you, now concerning spiritual gifts, I do not want you to be ignorant. Um, and since Paul says he doesn't want us to be ignorant, that's very, very important. It's vital that we know and understand about the subject under discussion, which is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It is a sad fact that whenever Paul says, I do not want you to be ignorant, honestly, that means that there's strife and disagreement on the subject. Nevertheless, I am so grateful for the Apostle Paul because um, he puts us right. But I just wanted to touch one example that's still going, sadly, uh, concerning these gifts. It is a false teaching called cessationism. These gifts, they say, are no longer relevant for us today. I'm not quite sure why we should do without healing, why we should do without a word from the Lord, why we should do without the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And they say, because they have passed away, presumably, uh, they say that it ceased after the apostles died and the Bible was completed. 
yes, the Bible was completed, but nowhere in that Bible does it say um, that these, these supernatural gifts have ceased. It actually, the, the Bible says that these supernatural gifts will continue to the end of the age. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 to 7. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him. In all utterance, this refers to the utterance gifts, and all knowledge, this refers to the revelation gifts. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in and among you, um, this actually refers to the power gifts. Uh, verse 7, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly awaiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to read another scripture, which is Mark 16, uh, verse 17 and 18. And these signs, Jesus is speaking, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. That does not mean we play with serpents. It means, as um, the Apostle Paul, when a serpent um, gripped hold of his arm, um, he shook it off into the fire. Um, and actually, one bite from one of those deadly things actually would kill you um, in 10, 12 minutes. So he shook it off and it did not harm him. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And actually a story about drinking anything deadly, uh, there was um, a group of evangelists, this is a long, 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 long time ago. I think it was probably 50 or 60 years ago. Um, this group went to um, a village, actually I believe it was in America, but I'm not too sure about that. And um, they were given to drink uh, something at a, at a meal time, and people looked at them rather strangely, at, you know, at the next day. Uh, and they asked, well, why are you looking this strangely? They said, well, actually, we poisoned your drink. We expected you to die in the night, but they didn't. Now, we don't want to start drinking deadly things just to, to prove a point, but should, any, should you drink any deadly thing, actually, the power of God will protect you if you are following him, if you are close to him and if you are on his business. So um, if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will, not might be or could. They will recover. And that word recover is a process. So often we are expecting miracles and they're wonderful, fabulous, and instantaneously um, someone is completely healed, uh, which happened to me, you've all heard my testimony. I was completely healed in a nanosecond from rheumatoid arthritis. But others, other times I've had hands laid on me and I have recovered over a period of time. Um, so verse 7, I want to read that to you again. So that you come short in no gift, eagerly awaiting the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is telling us all gifts will continue enriching the church even to the end of the church age when Jesus will be revealed to us in the rapture. Oh, glorious day. I've just been talking to somebody and we were looking forward. How wonderful to close, to, to, to be raptured. Or even if we die, um, our spirit will leave our body and be immediately in the presence of the Lord. If we've received Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. Now, Jesus, I mean, he moved abundantly in the gifts of the Spirit, and so did the early church. When we read of what they did in the early church, it's simply absolutely wonderful. And these are recorded in the book of Acts and the epistles. And actually, in fact, they were fulfilling the words of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who commissioned them to preach. He told them to preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons. He hasn't changed. 
uh, the church changed a bit, but Jesus hasn't changed and his commission to us has not changed. Let's go to John chapter 14, uh, read verses 12 and 13. Jesus is speaking and he says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do. Wow! Whatever Jesus did, the works that his believing ones do, they will do. And greater works than these will they do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You note that Jesus didn't limit this promise to the apostles. He applied it to all who believe in him throughout the whole church age. After, Je after Jesus was resurrected, he gave the Great Commission, as we know in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 18, saying, and he's speaking to us today, 2,000 years later, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. Doesn't it break your heart when people refuse to forgive? If only, if only they would know and believe what would happen to them when they leave their bodies. And these supernatural signs will follow those who believe, not just apostles, those who believe in my name. In my name, they will cast out demons. That's a power gift. They will speak with new tongues. This is an utterance gift. And later on, I'm going to, to share with you more about praying in tongues. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful gift. Uh, they will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And those are the power gifts. Let's turn also to um, verse 19 in Mark chapter 16. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And immediately they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with, with them. He was confirming the word that he'd said, confirming the word through the accompanying signs. As they went, the Lord went with them, confirming the word with supernatural signs and gifts. This is what Jesus meant when he said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Um, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. All authority, Jesus said, has been given to me in heaven and on earth. These are the last words he spoke. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You see, Jesus promises us as we go in obedience to fulfill the Great Commission, he will be providing us supernatural support and confirming um, that the signs and the wonders and the miracles that he did in the church age at the beginning right up to the end of the church age. And the same truth was emphasized at the birth of the church at Pentecost when Peter announced, this is Joel's prophecy, of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all flesh in the last days was now being fulfilled. In the Bible, last days are brought by the death and resurrection of the Messiah and the establishing of the new covenant. The last days continue throughout the church age into the millennium. This prophecy is saying that in the last days, the Holy Spirit of God will be poured out on all flesh, not just on certain special people or clever people, or religious people. It's going to be poured out on all people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and have received him as their Lord and Savior. And the result of this amazing outpouring will be the manifestation of the Holy Spirit through all of God's people, all of God's people. Because you, you feel that you're just an ordinary person doing an ordinary job, you are God's person and you are 
filled with the Holy Spirit. You are anointed to pray for the sick if the Lord should so guide you. Whether young or old, male or female, rich or poor, slave or free, and this is going to continue throughout, we're in the period of the last days, throughout the last days until Jesus returns. Praise God. Peter declared in Acts chapter 2, verse 16 to 19, This outpouring on the day of Pentecost is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. This is an utterance gift. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And these are revelation gifts. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven and signs in the earth beneath. These are power gifts. And the purpose of this wonderful outpouring of the Holy Spirit is associated with the supernatural signs. In verse 21, it says, It shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever who is listening to my voice now, if you call upon the name of the Lord and ask him to save you, he will. He will come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. Peter in Acts chapter 2 verse 22, he explains this prophecy. It's come into fulfillment. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you, to, uh, sorry, attested by God to you by mirac miracles, wonders and signs. God did through him in your midst, as you yourself also know. Being delivered by the determined purpose of foreknowledge of God, Jesus being delivered. You have taken by lawless hands, you have taken him and crucified him and put him to death whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it. And do you know the scripture tells us that if he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives inside you, he will make your physical body full of the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. His healing power is ever available. It's not like you have to make a great intercession and beg God to pour out healing. It's available for you as you believe his word, believe that the spirit of God who lives in you is making your body full of his resurrection life. Declare it. Um, say the resurrection power of almighty God is in me and is healing me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Your words are powerful, but we're going to get to words a little bit later. And so after showing how the Messiah's resurrection was prophesied uh, in Psalm 16, Peter continues his explanation of how jo Joel's prophecy was fulfilled. Here we go back to Acts chapter 2 and it's verse 32 and 33. This Jesus God has raised up of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. What an amazing moment when the Spirit of God was poured out on the disciples. Um, Peter then explained how they could receive and experience this promise of the outpoured spirit and his gifts in their own lives. In Acts uh, chapter 2, verse 38 to 39, um, I've adjusted the word order to agree with the original Greek. Then Peter said to them, Repent of your rejection of Jesus as the Messiah for the remission of sins. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And you, every one of you, shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise of the Holy Spirit and his gifts, as given in Joel's prophecy, is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. You see, Peter points out that the promise of the Holy Spirit 
and his supernatural gifts that are given and spoken about in Joel's prophecy is for all believers in these last days. All of us. We are in the last days, all of us. For Joel said that the Spirit will be poured on all flesh who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. If you don't call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, if you are not his, then it's not the Spirit of God is not poured out upon you. And that as a result, those who are call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, the result would be that all will be able to operate in his gifts. Peter therefore assures them that the promise of the Spirit and his gifts applies to them. This applies to you and to all future generations in all places on the earth um, during the end, during the church age. Therefore, to say that the gifts of the Spirit are not for today is to contradict the Word of God. The only scripture actually that can be used to argue that the gifts have passed away is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 to 13. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will fail. Where there are tongues, they will cease. Where there is a word of knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. For now we see in a mirror dimly, the mirror of God's word. But then, face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these, is love, God's love. This indeed says that unlike love, which is eternal, the gifts of the Spirit will pass away. Um, they will not continue throughout eternity. They are manifestations of just a part or portion of God's knowledge, power and inspiration. So when God brings perfection, the eternal state, then the gifts are redundant. Um, for we will then be living in uh, perfection and complete manifestation of God's grace. And I was just speaking to someone um, before we came on air. Um, and we were saying, won't it be wonderful to be in heaven when you think there is no sickness, no nastiness, um, just pure joy in the presence of the Lord. How amazing to see the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just wanted to share uh, something about when my mother died. And of course, one is I was deeply distressed because I wanted to be with her when she di died. Um, and a call came in and I was taken away. And when I went back, she had actually died. But two friends were with her. So I was I was all upset. And the next day, of course, we have to register her her death. And I'm sitting with Pastor Derek and he just said to me, are you all right? And I said, I'm absolutely not not all right. And he just quoted scripture. He said, it says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I was not seeking anything supernatural, but right in front of my eyes, it was like a TV set. I saw my mom and um, she was with the Lord Jesus Christ. His arm was cradled over her. She was leaning into him and she was fat. Now that's important because she was skinny, skinny, like a skeleton when she died. And this is just a few hours later, I see this picture. And she's leaning into the Lord, so happy. And as it were, mind to mind, she didn't actually speak it out. She said to me, darling, I wished I'd come a lot sooner. And she'd gone. Do you know all the grief, all the anger, um, all the rage that I felt at the person who called me away, gone instantaneously in a nanosecond. And so sometimes God will give us these wonderful um, spiritual things. And I wanted to share that with you because heaven is a wonderful place. 
And if any of us are, uh, are frightened of, of dying, particularly as we've got this COVID virus, but we trust the Lord to keep us healthy, but thousands and thousands of people have died. And I remember sort of cogitating on this, and I'm so grateful for the Holy Spirit, and he's saying it to you. Um, he said to me, do you think I've been with you all these years? And the moment it's time for you to leave your body, and the words were actually, I'll just clear off and leave you on your own. No, either the Holy Spirit or an angel, but we do not die because we are born again. Our body may cease working, but our spirit and our soul were carried up to be in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. I cannot imagine how wonderful it is to be in his presence, to see the one who paid such a great price. Can you imagine seeing the Lord Jesus Christ? I know that I actually envied the woman. Um, she was, uh, how can I say, a naughty girl because the Sadducees and the Pharisees looked down on her and said uh, she came in and she'd heard that Jesus was dining at a certain um, house and she came in and she wept on his feet and because the, as you know they eat sort of lying down <laughs> and she was weeping on his feet washing his feet with her tears she dried his feet with her hair and in those days it was considered only a prostitute would show her hair um, and she was kissing his feet and she anointed them with this very expensive oil. Um, and the host uh, was thinking, how can he let this woman touch him? And Jesus said, when I came, you did not um, wash my feet. There was no, nothing to wash my feet. Um, you gave me no kiss when I arrived. Um, you gave me no oil to anoint my hair, but this, this woman, she has washed my feet with her tears and she has not ceased kissing my feet and she has anointed me with a very expensive oil. Um, and he said to her, go your way, your sins are forgiven. And I thought, how wonderful, how absolutely wonderful to be able to touch the Saviour's feet. But we shall see him face to face and his arm can be around us. So to be in heaven is the most wonderful, wonderful place and death is not to be feared. Thank you for watching. All Derek Walker's books are available in printed and Kindle versions in all Amazons worldwide or online with other great products where you can also support our programmes at www.oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk or by calling 01865 515 086.